Are you familiar with, I'm sure you are, this acronym FOMO, F-O-M-O, what's it stand for? Fear of missing out, which is, you know, something I personally struggle with, especially as an extrovert. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> I love to be where the action is, where the party is. Um, so uh, FOMO, I, it's not generally something that's thought well of, I feel like, in our culture today. People are like, ah, oh, you shouldn't have that, okay? But today, I'm actually going to challenge you to have FOMO about something. Fear of missing out on what God is up to in your life. We don't want to miss out on that, right? If there's anything that we are going to miss out on, we don't want to miss out on what God is up to in our lives, uh, FOMO. So um, anyway, it's wordle time, don't you think? Uh, we're in this sermon series called The Great Commandment. We're using this fun game that's really popular right now uh, called Wordle. And uh, we just have this week, I think, and next week left with this one. Um, Wordle, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how the Lord leads, okay? Um, but Wordle's a game. You guess five. You guess a five-letter word. You see what, uh, how close you get, and um, you try to solve the puzzle because there is actually just one answer in Wordle, and that's true for today as well. So I'm going to invite people to uh, share a first word. You need a five-letter word, and we'll see how close we get on the first one. Somebody told me they got in the real Wordle, New York Times Wordle, they got it in two today. That's impressive. Okay, so what do you think? No pressure. <laughs> what do you think? Let's throw a word. Tears. T-E-A-R-S. -E There's a few of those today, and that's okay, because, hey, we're real people. Tears. Ooh, okay, we got one green and one yellow. The green means that it will show up. A is in that spot. The R does appear in this word. We're just not quite sure where. It's not there. All right, who that? has another guess? Stamp, like a rubber stamp or like a postage stamp. Okay, stamp, S-T-A-M-P. Ooh, that's all right. That happens sometimes, doesn't it? No new information on that one. Who's got another guess? All right, Grant. What is it? Brain? Brain. B-R-A-I-N. Oh, he's got the smart one today. Okay, good job. We try not to be too, like, implicit, but you're, you're on to us. Because today in this series, in Mark, it's love the Lord your God with all your heart. We've conquered that a little bit. We're working on it, though, I'm sure. Heart, soul, today's mind. So we might think about our brains in relation to loving the Lord. Um, and so we're going to go there today in Mark um, chapter 12. But before we do that, thinking about this FOMO, this fear of missing out, what if we're missing out on what God's doing in our life? I woke up yesterday morning um, and I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do first? Because I had a list, right? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of things that I needed to attend to. What do you want me to do first? And that's just something, you know, I've got some mentors in my life who have kind of coached me to just have dialogue with God. You know, like that? I mean, like, all right, Lord. I didn't say it out loud. I said it, said it in, my, in my heart, I guess, in my mind. Um, Lord, what, what do you want me to do first? And uh, there were three, um, three phrases from a poem that I've been exposed to that came to mind for me. And they were, they were this, uh, pay attention, be astonished, tell about it like, okay, that just kind of came to my mind. Um, so then I, I went to open up the shades in our living room, one of our living room windows. Okay, pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. So I open up the um, blind and, uh, and, and a pair of cardinals who actually live quite often in our backyard uh, flew into my sight. They were right next to each other. Uh, but I haven't seen them for a while. It's been a little while. So it was really cool to see both of them. And I thought, oh, I should go get my camera, you know, like the, a better camera than my phone. Um, but then I was like, ah, they're kind of in the shade. Maybe, you know, it was almost like God was like, Jody, this is just for you. You know, you don't have to go and like, oh, got to capture this for somebody else to see it. How cool is it, right? Ah, this is just for you. Pay attention. Be astonished tell about it. That was kind of running, running through my mind a little bit. And I thought, okay, Lord, I'm just going to stand here. I think this is what you're having me do right now. And I do want to encourage you to think about that in your relationship with God. 
You know, like one, one step at a time, because he does love to surprise his kids. He does love to speak into our lives, and we don't want to miss out on that, right? I hope I'm not the only one in the room with that uh, vantage point. Would you turn with me to Mark chapter 12, because we don't want to miss out on the words that he has for us. Mark chapter 12, we're back here. We, we kind of like to do this. I personally like to do this. Take a passage of scripture and mine for the treasure that's there. It's so easy to just pick a passage and be like, woo, and just do this big flyover, but then you miss, you miss it. You, you can miss nuggets of gold that God has for us. So Mark chapter 12, we're gonna start with verse 28. Jesus has been dialoguing with these religious skeptical leaders, right, who are wait, waiting to trap him up. But there is one who has listened in and has a question that's pointed for Jesus. It's one of the scribes, uh, one of the religious leaders, kind of like a lawyer, okay, very familiar with the law of God. All right, verse 28, and one of the scribes came up to Jesus and heard them disputing with one another, Jesus and the other religious leaders, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, what commandment is the most important of all? And Jesus answered this way. The most important is, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. To love the Lord with all your mind. I mean, there's much to be said about the mind. Um, There's a lot of scripture that talks about how we think, how we process, what we understand. The definition of the Greek word here used in this passage is is the mind uh, comprising alike the faculties of perceiving and understanding and those of feeling, judging, and determining. Can I say that again? The mind, compromising, uh, or comprising, I, I'm sorry, comprising alike the f- faculties of perceiving and understanding and those of feeling, judging, and determining. More specifically, the intellectual faculty, the understanding. Lord, I want to love you with all my understanding, with my mind. You're calling me, Jesus is saying, hey, here's the greatest commandment. I want you to love the Lord your God with all your mind. Now, what does that look like? Back to this poem, uh, written by Mary Oliver, a Pulitzer Prize winning uh, poet. Uh, Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it. God gives us this brain, this mind, and uh, it's a gift, and he wants us to use it. And, and three ways we can do that are, and this is not exhaustive and all, and this, this is not actually, I don't know that Mary Oliver is even a Christian, okay? But I think it's pretty interesting. Pay attention to what God's doing. If, if you don't want to miss out on what God's doing, pay attention, be astonished, and tell about it. So if I were to ask you this morning, what is God doing in your life right now? What's God doing in your life right now? What's he up to? What have you noticed? That question might stump you. I don't know if you think about that question or a question like that very often. I do actually want to prompt you to do that often because we don't want to miss out. We don't want to miss out. And sometimes we need to stop and we need to pay attention and we then are astonished and then we can tell about it. But one thing at a time here, let's go for one at a time. Pay attention. Have you ever been driving your car. You're on your way home. It's kind of a familiar route. And you realize you get home without even thinking about it. Like, what happened in the last 10 minutes? Like, I know I got from there to here, but I don't even like remember any piece of it. I think when we come to the Lord, um, or really as we walk through life, when it comes to this question, what is God doing in your life right now? Sometimes it's about focus. I want you to picture driving your car and being really attentive to what you're seeing around you. You know, like things are in focus. I'm not sort of, you know, I I don't even know how to describe that. You know that your eyes just kind of, it's kind of scary to think about your eyes sort of glazing over while you're driving for a period of time, but it happens, right? We sort of are doing, but if we don't want to miss out on what God's doing, there's a focus piece, there's a pay attention piece that needs to happen. Otherwise, we can miss it. We can miss it. 
It can go past us without us realizing it. This week, uh, I had an experience kind of like this. Tara had a band concert on Thursday night, and um, I don't know what it is about band concerts for me. Maybe it's the, uh, like, go, go, go too much, that when you actually sit down for a band concert and you're hearing this music, and it's so amazing. I, lo I love band concerts, but your brain kind of goes in a million directions. <laughs> Mine does anyway. Like, I start sort of unpacking all kinds of things in my mind. Or I'm like, oh, pay attention to the saxophone who just came, you know, person who just came in, or the percussionist, because they're always doing some really interesting things, right? And um, you, your eyes wander, but I was like, I want to really pay attention to Tara. I want to really focus in on watching Tara because this is one of her last concerts in high school. I want to pay attention. I don't want to miss anything. And I'm thankful because she plays the flute. Go flutes. I was a flute player too. So she gets to sit toward, kind of toward the front, actually in the front row, so I can see her really well. We, we actually are very strategic like all band parents, uh, of where we sit so that we can like have the greatest view possible. What if we came to our relationship with God? What if we came to every day with God and we're like, Lord, I want to get in the best position possible to see what you're up to in my life. I don't want to miss it. And I don't, I don't want my eyes to just wander everywhere because there's a whole lot of things that, that are wanting my attention. I want, to, I want to see what you're up to, Lord. I want to see what you're doing in my life. I don't want to miss it. So how do we pay attention to what God is doing in our lives? Let's talk practically. First, I'd encourage you to ask him, Lord, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. You can take it. I have no idea. Maybe that's you. I have no idea what you're doing in my life or in a particular situation. Maybe I have a decision to make. God, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Ask him just very plainly. Just ask him. Ask him multiple times if you need to, over and over and over. You know, sometimes little ones get our attention after the 20th time. We hate to admit that. Now, God is utterly different than that, but there's something important that happens in us when we ask, too. Sometimes God's helping our hearts as we continually come to him, because I kind of meant it the first time, and the second time I meant it a little more, and Lord, okay, now I mean it. I need you. And it positions our hearts like we would at a band concert so that we might be able to see him more clearly, see what he's doing, focus, pay attention to what he's up to. I love the verse Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, one of my favorites. I encourage you to memorize it. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts and do not lean on your own understanding. If you don't know what to do, it says, it says clearly in Proverbs, don't lean on your own understanding. In all of your ways, in everything you do, acknowledge him. Lord, you are Lord. I'm going to acknowledge you. And he will make straight your paths. Oh, I need that. And I need to be reminded of that. Okay, Lord, yep, again, I'm not trusting you. Again, I've lost my focus, Lord. I want to trust in you and not lean on my own understanding. So we come to him and we ask him, Lord, what are you doing in my life? And by the way, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to really think about specifically what God is up to in your life. So pay attention, okay, even now, because I believe that he has some things for us. Um, how does he help us? Because we need it. How does he help us focus on him? It's kind of like a speed bump, in my opinion, Sometimes we need to slow down like at the band concert. We need to slow down enough, take a minute, take a deep breath, slow down like that speed bump in order to pay attention to what he's doing, in order to grasp what he's up to. Coming to worship like you are today, whether online or in person, is like that. It's kind of a speed bump, right? I mean, it's a different a moment in time for you in your week. You, none of you come here to the Hilton Garden Inn during the week, right? That would be weird. The people here would be like, what are you doing? What's up? We just sit here. No, Sunday mornings, um, and by the way, those of you online, maybe you're listening and, or, or worshiping with us throughout the week. We still want you to check in. We'd love to know you're here. But when we stop and we worship, it's kind of that moment in time, kind of that speed bump that slows us down from our normal pattern of going, 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 and allows us allows us a second for him to connect with us, for us to pay attention. 
coming to worship is one of those ways. Another speed bump is doing something that, y- that you do that connects. You know, last week I talked about this, the Sacred Pathways book, which I think we're working on bringing an, an OC together to, to go through that book together. But we all are designed uniquely by God to connect with him in all kinds of really cool ways. We should know what that is so we can pay attention and position ourselves in such a way that we are We are able to focus on him. He desires to speak into our lives, into our situation, to break through and to lead in a relationship in a practical and everyday kind of way. And I promise you that as you invite him, he will show up in your world. He he wants to, to have you know the answer to what is God doing in your life, okay? And he's often desiring to tell you about who he is, his great love for you, and who you are in the context of that great love. So if, if I want to pause, uh, we might ask ourselves, um, and we want to know, we want to pay attention, you might ask yourself, well, what am I going through right now? What are the highs and lows? What are the challenges that I'm facing? What are the joys that I'm seeing? What are the blessings? Sometimes we need to pay attention to what's going on in our lives because God is active in the midst of our everyday life. Is it a small thing that God kind of gave me a nudge to say, before you jump into your list today, pay attention, be astonished, and I was, by the way, by those cardinals, and tell about it. So we ask ourselves, okay, Lord, I'm seeing some things happening in my life. Maybe there's a relational struggle. Maybe there's a challenge that you're experiencing at work. Maybe there's some anxiousness that you've noticed in your heart, in your mind. Maybe there's a decision that's before you. Uh, it's pretty easy, too, to t- pay attention to what's happening in other people's lives, which, by the way, sometimes we need the help of one another. You know, you can say, hey, uh, Jody asked me to consider this question. What's God up to in my life? I have no idea. Do you have any insight into that? Ask your spouse, ask your friends, ask your parents, ask your kids. Do you have any idea what God's up to in my life? I'd love to get your insight into that. (laughs) They might have some very interesting answers. You might be afraid to ask, actually, which is probably a good sign. Lean in on that a little bit because God wants to speak and we don't want to miss out. You know, we don't, we, we want to have in some ways a little bit of that fear of missing out on what God is up to. So if you're dealing with a difficulty, we then can remember as you acknowledge the difficulty that God can be our refuge in the midst of the difficulty. If you're dealing with anxiousness, what does God bring to the table when we're anxious? He promises to be our peace. If you're dealing with a decision, you're trying to sort that out, he wants to provide clarity, a path forward. If you are in need of hope, you're just downcast, your heart is downcast, What do we know about God when he meets us in the midst of that? He is our hope. (laughs) He promises to be the source of our hope, even in the midst of difficulty. And then when he shows up and you have a calm that you know doesn't come from you, we can count that as a blessing from God. God's doing that. He's gifting you with that. When you have a decision to make and you come to one and you know that it's from him, Man, that's, that's a gift from him, and we can acknowledge him. We can pay attention to that. Now, I'm not going to spend quite as much time on the last two pieces, but I think this pay attention part is pretty important because when we do, when we pay attention, we notice that he's active, he's doing something, he's providing something, he's showing up. By the way, this uh, James, uh, let's see, 1 verse 17, talks about how he is a good father, Okay, he's a good father and he gives good gifts. If you've received a gift from God, it's because he is good. He is a good father. He's good at providing gifts and encouragement for us. So we pay attention to that. So what's a blessing that's going on in your life right now? That might be a second question to ask to identify what God's up to, how he's providing. So consider at least one or two things right now, actually. I just want to pause for a second. Consider something a blessing. If it lines up with God's word, it's from him. He's the father who gives good, good gifts. James 1.17 says this. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the father of lights, the one who created stars and put them in place, okay? 
Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. He does not change. He is good. So as we notice the blessing, we can be astonished. When was the last time you were astonished? When you you paid attention, you noticed something and you were like, whoa. Be astonished. I want you to go on a treasure hunt this week of being astonished. I want you to take note. Maybe make a little note section in your phone. Write down moments that you see that are like, that took my breath away. It could be a sunset. It could be two cardinals flying by. It could be a moment of encouragement from someone. God wants to interject in our lives. He wants to be present. We don't want to miss out on it. So be astonished. Pause and be astonished. Be astonished. And then the thing cements so much in our lives when we tell about it. Now, I know you can tell it's easy for me to talk. Yes. Not news to anybody. It comes easy to me to talk and to tell about it. I love it, by the way. It's probably my favorite thing to do when we come together on Sunday mornings. I love to brag about God. There is something about paying attention, then being astonished, but then telling somebody about it. Because it's then that we sort of register it in a new way in our hearts that God is on the move in my life. He showed up, he provided, he answered. And so when we talk about it, we also encourage other people. And that's one of the things we can do when we come to worship. For those who are available uh, after, we're going to have some people go to lunch. If you're available, we'd love to do that. I'd encourage you to tell one thing. Now, I mean, if you're not sure, it's okay. Remember, we can help each other identify what God's up to. But maybe there's one thing you've been astonished by by God, maybe in the last week. Well, we have someone here who's going to share her story. Uh, We like to call them only God stories here at Oasis Church, and we haven't been telling as many as we need to. And there is an only God story that he's been doing um, in Christine's life and in her family. So Christine, would you come on up? And we're going to, we want to hear about what God has been up to in your life. All right, this is Christine McSweeney. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us up here and uh, your willingness to uh, pay attention, be astonished, and now you're going to tell about it, so thank you. Tell us, tell us what God's been up to in your life lately. So um, over this last probably month, I have a daughter who plays Division I volleyball, and um, she, for lots of different reasons, entered the transfer portal, which sounds kind of Star Trek-ish to me, I think, you know. She enters this portal and magically gets deposited somewhere else, okay? That's the process, and um, there's a few things that go on in between. But she entered the portal uh, halfway through, like, mid-January-ish, not wanting to wait until spring, just wanting to um, see what, you know, opportunities were out there for her. And she is a, at least a month or so ago, I was under the assumption she was a coastal girl, would never end up back in Iowa, very much, you know, wants to be in the sunshine, the good weather, all that good stuff. So that was the beginning of her decision-making progress. What schools are interested in my abilities that are in the sunshine? <laughs> Which, Because yeah. that, that's where she's been, right? Down right. south. Yes, okay. she's in been the in the sunshine. south. Yep, in the sunshine and um, just a little bit better weather than here in Iowa sometimes, especially this time of year. So she had um, a visit set up on the West Coast, super excited about it. For whatever reason, um, things did not work out. Credits didn't transfer right. Um, Just having to switch majors for a while to get, you know, to a place at that school where she could be to then switch what she wants to really do. And it was all kind of messy, and she was very, very disappointed. And, you know, just there were some tears and some discussions together. So... That was a couple weeks ago, and I just texted her um, after that day, and we talked through some things. And the next morning, I texted her, and I said, how are you today? I said, um, I just want you to know that God is going to put you where you need to be. That was my text. So, you know, I know you're disappointed, but God's going to put you right where you need to be. Fast forward a couple days, and she um, kind of went back to the drawing board, looked at a couple other schools that were interested in her. 
And there were two in particular then that she thought she would visit. One was south, very south, in the Sunshine State, I think it is. <laughs> and another one was Iowa. <laughs> Much to my surprise. So I was very excited about that. Um, and so the Iowa visit was first. And we did some more talking, you know, through it all. What, what, what brings you to I, you know, what she really liked the coach and just kind of the conversation they had on the phone. And the southern school that she was interested in had a setter. My daughter's a middle, very tall middle. So a tall setter is super advantageous. And the southern school that she was looking at had a tall setter as well. And come to find out the day that she visited Iowa, that setter she was interested in in the south was also visiting Iowa on the same day. So I'm like, there's some, there's some fingerprints here, God. I see them. I'm paying attention. I'm kind of like, wow, okay, I'm glad the Iowa visits first. And <laughs> so, so she scheduled the visit for Tuesday this past week. And all the time, the whole time the week prior, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to get down there for lunch to have lunch with her and visit with the coaches and a couple of the teammates because we'd been invited. You know, he knew that she had family in the area. Invite them to lunch. Well, you know, part of the visit. I had to work. My other daughter, who also wanted to see her sister, had to go to school. So it was just going to be my husband because, you know, I just, I had looked at the time I had to take off and I didn't have enough and da-da-da-da-da. And enter weather <laughs> that God controls. And we have this nice little ice storm Monday night that closes school on Tuesday when Delaney is down in Iowa visiting. And so guess who got to go to the visit? All of us. It was so exciting. So again, okay, there's a few fingerprints. Um, God putting you right where you needed to be. And that was us too. That was the family too. Um, and the beautiful thing about that, because it was not great weather, that our daughter flew in Monday night before the weather started and flew out Wednesday morning after the weather was all cleaned up. So it all worked out. So, I mean, there was just a lot of amazing things that, are, that went on throughout this week that just made me pay attention. I really, and and um, even through this sermon, having texted Delaney, God will put you right where you need to be. I mean, that was basically Proverbs 3, <laughs> 5 through 6 that you just mentioned. And um, going through my head all week was Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the paths that I have for you. Um, and just reminding myself of that as Delaney had decisions to make. And it was so evident, and now it, and it's so easy to talk about this now, um, that God was paving that path for Delaney to make a decision. And I am just really happy to announce that she's going to be playing for Iowa next fall. That's so awesome. <laughs> Yay. So she is coming home from North Carolina, where she currently is, to 45 minutes away next fall. She'll be back in the summer. I'm so excited. And God just worked all kinds of cool stuff throughout this whole thing. I'm thinking we need to do an Oasis Church, like, go and uh, watch her cheer on. Would she'll that have, be a, really she'll fun? have a nice big fan base. Yes, yes. 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 Well, Delaney, we're excited. We know you're probably watching this and um, so excited for you guys. And what a beautiful example of paying attention, being astonished. And we are. We join you in that and telling about it. God is good. Let's, uh, let's thank him and Christine. Let's thank Christine for sharing and telling about it. So thank you so much, Christine. Yay, let's hear it for God. All right, well, that's our challenge before us. Let's do it, huh? Let's pay attention. That might seem like an extreme situation. Maybe you're dealing with a small thing that's just really under your skin. It's just bothering you. Let's keep practicing that. Pay attention. Be astonished and tell about it. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the invitation to be in relationship with you that's practical and real and good and true. Um, thank you for your answer to prayer for Delaney, for the McSweeney's, God. Um, we are, we're blessed uh, by the way that you've worked here, God, and we ask your blessing on Delaney. And uh, for all of, all of our children, grandchildren, God, we bring them before you, ask that you would help them pay attention, be astonished, and tell about it. Uh, but start with us, God, and um, I just think about how you've worked in our lives, and even as you're working in Oasis Church, help us to pay attention, 
be astonished and tell about it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.